did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy can calm a storm with his hands? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where Did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? The sleeping child. Welcome to worship at Trinity United Methodist Church in Hutchinson, Kansas. I am Michael Thompson DeGrief, the senior pastor. Today is January 3rd, the first Sunday of 2021. And today we are celebrating Epiphany Sunday. We are excited and hope that you will be blessed by the preaching of our guest today, Reverend Dr. Shelley Petz. I also want to uh, encourage you to keep an eye out for some special guests that will be visiting us from afar. In the call to worship. Advent and Christmas are only the beginning of the story, not the end. We need their messages to shape us all year long. As we begin a new year, we come to worship. We come to welcome the Christ child in our midst and Christ's light in one another. When we celebrate Epiphany, we yearn for the light to be revealed. We come searching for a star, a guide, the light for ourselves and the world. The Magi waited and watched, knowing something wondrous would happen. We waited for the birth of Christ, and now we watch for wondrous hope to take root. Come, let us worship, let us praise, let us seek. Prepare us to receive new light and hope. Amen. We 
three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star Oh, star of wonder, star of light Star with royal beauty bright Westward leading, still proceeding Guide us to thy pearl have heard the story of the wise men. If you haven't, you're going to hear it later during the scripture, but what I wanted to focus on was the very end of the story. When they finally get to Bethlehem and they find baby Jesus, Matthew 2 verse 11 says, they entered the house and they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. And then they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, when I was little, I probably heard this story hundreds of times, but I never really knew why these men would have brought these three gifts. I mean, they got there when Jesus was about two years old, and so why didn't they bring him something maybe a little bit more helpful? I don't know, something like, you know, a sippy cup? He was probably ready for that. Maybe pull-ups? I don't know, a fun book? Well... Okay, so maybe those things weren't around back in Jesus' time, but there was a reason for the gifts that they did bring. Okay, let's look at what they were. The first thing they brought him was gold. My gold doesn't quite clink like normal gold probably does, but gold was considered really, really valuable in Jesus' time, just like today. Having gold would have shown that you were very wealthy. And because it was valuable, kings and queens were the people who were most likely to have it. 
And so for them to bring this gift, they were acknowledging that they did consider Jesus to be a king. The second gift was frankincense. Now when you burn frankincense, and you can see it here maybe, when you burn frankincense, it gives off a really beautiful and very powerful smell. It was also very expensive. And so when people burned it, it was usually because they were worshiping a god. And so when the wise men gave the gift of frankincense, they were showing that they considered Jesus to be God. The third gift was myrrh, and it's actually a spice. And usually it was used after someone had died to get their body ready to be buried. And so you have to wonder if the wise men gave this gift showing that they understood that Jesus was human and that he would eventually die to save his people. And thank goodness these wise men gave these thoughtful and expensive gifts to this humble family of Joseph and Mary and Jesus. Because soon after the wise men leave, Mary and Joseph are told to leave the country so that King Herod could not kill Jesus. Had they not had these gifts to help with their trip, I wonder what might have happened. Thank goodness for the wise men and that they got to be a part of Jesus' childhood. Not only did they help us learn about who Jesus was through the gifts they brought, but those gifts also helped to save his family. Would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the people who were important in Jesus' life, and thank you for being important in our lives. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Twenty twenty is a new year filled with possibilities. May we prayerfully choose our priorities, seeking godly characteristics by living out John Wesley's covenant prayer. Let's prepare for prayer and recite the prayer together in a moment. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pastor Michael mentioned early in the service 
for you to watch for some special guests. And it is indeed my honor and my privilege to introduce to you Melchior, Balthazar, and Caspar. These three kings played an important part in the story of the birth of Jesus. These three kings were just given some great opportunities. These three kings, these three, guys, what's wrong? You got two. It's, it's okay. But you're still the three kings. It's okay. Can you use your mic? I, I couldn't hear you without your mic, sir. I, I, in all due respect. Where's Malkiar? Okay, so we know that you're the three kings, and you're just going to be the three kings, and I'm not... Um, uh, Melchior is not able to make it. Oh, holy night. What's going on here? How are we going to do this gig without him? Takes three kings, you know. Well, here's what I know. And, and again, I, 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 I certainly am in awe of your presence. But just know that if, if, if we wait for Melchior, we're going to have to wait 14 or 10 or maybe seven days for him to be able to be here. So if you guys could just do the song as if there are three kings, um, 2020 style. We'll do are, you, are you in for 2020 style? Pretty sure we can sure. do that. Okay, thank We're you here. so much, your highnesses. We Three Kings, the pandemic version. Kings are six feet apart. We'll Purcell before we depart. We've been tested as suggested. Careful are we and smart. Oh, oh, do our masks go with our gowns? Do these face shields hide our crowns? We've had plenty, twenty, twenty, still we head towards David's town. Malkiah is now quarantined, stuck in Persia, so it seems. No more travel on a camel till there's a good vaccine. Oh. Dieting now, he's dieting. Life now is slower paced. Casper left the caravan. He postponed his stargazing plans. No more roaming. Casper's homing, scrubbing his redded hands. Oh. Our scripture for today comes from Matthew 2, 7 through 11. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, 
bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child and Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My name is Reverend Shelley Petz, and I am grateful to be able to be here with you today. I am thankful for the invitation from Pastor Michael, and especially also grateful for the entire staff here at Trinity, for the ways they have worked tirelessly throughout the Advent and Christmas season to provide incredible ministry for all of us. I am so grateful for their dedication, their perseverance, their creativity, and their faithfulness. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious and holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock, our redeemer, our guiding star, our savior, in whose name we pray, amen. Falling on our knees. I don't know how many times I fell on my knees as a child. The stories of from when I was learning to walk and would fall on my knees and stumble and bumble until I could finally do it on my own. And the times that I remember as I was growing up, falling on my knees on our gravel road. Time and time again, falling and scraping up the knees. And I remember the excruciating pain and having to wipe out all the gravel. But even more, I remember going into my house and being met there every time I had scraped up my knees, my parents meeting me there, helping me get cleaned up, gently pouring the hydrogen peroxide over my knees, and I got to watch the magic bubbles do their work. Every time I fell down and I was humbled, and then I began to heal. I also remember as a confirmation student, the power of the confirmation Sunday, when I was asked to kneel and I felt the weight of the pastor and my mentor and my parents as they lay their hands upon me. As I was kneeling, I could feel the gift that they were giving unto me the gift the church was bestowing upon me and the responsibility that I now had as I took my vows and promised to follow, to live a life following Christ. The power of falling on my knees, humbling myself and praying to God in the midst of everyday living. And oh, how many times I have fallen on my knees over this past year, both literally and figuratively, as I fell to my knees in my heart in prayer. Praying over this past year, praying for the world in the midst of a pandemic, and with so many injustices, with economic struggles, with anger and anxiety and fear and hatred, sometimes wrecking havoc. Falling to my knees, recognizing that I was not in control and I had so many more questions than answers and the world seemed out of control as well. 
Oh, how many times I have fallen to my knees. One of my favorite Christmas songs is, Oh, Holy Night. Usually every year I wait to listen to it until Christmas Eve because that's what I remember from my childhood, that that's a song that we sang in my home church growing up. And so I would often wait to listen to those words as they would raft, go through the rafters. But this year I knew I needed it before Christmas Eve. I knew I needed to listen to the words over and over again and let its hope bring light to me. The words of that song so poignant even still today. For it talks about a world in sin and error pining. And it talks about a weary world rejoicing. You know about a weary world, don't you? And it invites us to fall on our knees and hear the angel voices. And the song goes on and it talks about the wise men coming, following that light, following the star from a faraway land. And they were coming and they knew they too needed to bend low, to bend on their knees to the one who came into the world to change the world. And the song talks about a new hope and a new day. It talks about the day when the chains will be broken and all oppression shall cease. Oh, how I long for the day. What does it mean for us to fall on our knees and yield to the one who can change all things and who loves us in the midst of all things. A new year has begun. Here we are in the midst of the beginning of a new year and Advent and Christmas have come and gone, but I so believe that their message has something for us now on Epiphany Sunday and as we begin into a new year because the message of preparing for the coming of Christ and the coming of Christ's light has so much for each of us because we know the rest of the story. We know about Jesus' life and his teaching and his healing and his death and his resurrection and how much we need him in our world today. In the book by Adam Hamilton called Incarnation, Rediscovering the Significance of Christmas, his final chapter is about Epiphany and the importance of the Magi and the importance of them being ones to come and kneel, to fall on their knees in adoration of this small child. He talks about their importance because he opened wide God's mercy and grace through these wise men who came. They came from so far away. They were not of the same faith tradition. They were foreigners. But God spoke to them in a way that they understood through the stars, through the star that they could follow, recognizing that they knew and had studied the stars so incredibly well that when the new star appeared, they would know its importance. And they came from a long, long ways away. Probably roughly 1,200 miles they traveled. 1,200 miles. That's as far as from here to Long Island, New York, or Miami, Florida, or San Francisco, or Seattle. They came. And they didn't have cars or planes or buses or trains. They came by caravan. They came on foot or on animal back because they knew of the importance of that star. 
The journey probably took them over a hundred days. And they didn't know what it would cost them or what the journey would be like or what they were find. But they left and they traveled because they believed in what they would find. And when they arrived at the place where they found the child, they knelt down. They fell on their knees and offered their best gifts. Gifts that they adored to the one whom they would adore. They fell on their knees in adoration and praise. They yielded everything. I wonder what that would look like for us to yield everything, to fall on our knees in prayer or praise, and to give everything, our best gifts, all that we have, all that we are, our deepest hopes and sorrows to the one who came into the world for us. The Wesleyan Covenant Prayer is a prayer that John Wesley, one of the founders of the Methodist movement, invited people to pray at the beginning of every new year. I've been praying this prayer over the last several weeks, though, recognizing that as I pray this prayer now, I pray it differently than I did a year ago. I pray it differently because I am different. We are different. This year has been different. But it's a prayer of yielding, of yielding everything that we know and have and are, and offering that to God. But do you know these words? I am no longer my own, but thine. What does that say to say, God, I know I'm not in control. I know I don't have it all figured out. But, oh, Lord, you do. And let me be yours. Let me be clay in your hands and use me as you will. It says, put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. You mean even those people that I don't like, oh, God? Even those people that I don't agree with and would rather not see or talk to? This prayer says, rank me even with them. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Oh God, there has been so much suffering in this world. But it says, if it be your will, use me even in the midst of that. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Do you know the unemployment rates, God? Do you know how many people right here in our community have been unemployed over this past year? But in my work, whatever it is, O oh Lord, may it be for you, the prayer invites us to consider. It goes on to say, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. The birth of the Christ child reminds us of even the lowliest. Let me be full, let me be empty. God, it's so much easier when I think about times where I have been full and holidays where I've gathered with families and the the table has been filled with incredible feasts. But oh Lord, There are times over this past year where the emptiness, the emptiness of the table, the emptiness of the pews have been astounding. But, oh God, help us to meet you even in the emptiness. God, it says, let me have all things, let me have nothing. Lord, help me to live into this prayer because I don't know what this next year will bring, but help me to so understand and yield my life that I will know that you will walk with me and with each person in the midst of what is yet to come. 
Oh Lord, help us yield ourselves to you so that we can find ways to let your light shine. For that's what those magi did. They followed the shining light and yielded and brought their best gifts. And the world began to know of the power and promise of what was yet to come. It was one year ago on Epiphany Sunday when I, like many of you, were invited as a congregation to choose a star word, a word to guide us and lead us, a word to inspire us, to move us in the midst of our times of work and play and devotion and learning, to guide what we would explore during the year ahead. I wasn't really sure that I wanted to do it, but I decided, okay, the pastor has asked, so I'll, I'll consider. I remember Pastor Kim inviting us to do so and, and sharing with us her journey. And I said, I want to be a part of what Trinity is about this year. And I remember Trinity's staff picking a word, thrive. And I thought, that's incredible. And, and I've seen how they have done that over this year in ways never yet imagined. And then I was working on choosing a word, and, and I wanted to choose a word, but the words that I was wanting to pick didn't pick me. And the word that chose me was shine. I didn't like the word. I didn't want the word. I wanted anything but the word shine, because I, I thought it had too much of a Hoo-hoo, I don't know to it, and it just wasn't fitting. But the word was relentless and wouldn't let go of me. And so I decided, okay, I'll take on this word and, and see what happens over the year. Now I'll admit, there were days where I did not feel very shiny. There were days that were hard for me and for so many others. And I didn't feel like shining. There were other days, though, as I prayed upon the word and asked God to use me, that God continued to invite me to bring my best gifts, to bring my best gifts, to lay them at the feet of the cross, and to offer them to my neighbor and to my family and around the corner. And what I found is that every time I brought my best gifts, God continued to fill me in ways that I could shine more brightly than I could by myself. And I give thanks for God continuing to be relentless on me, recognizing that this world needs to have the light of Christ shining. And I yielded myself in ways that Christ could use me. And now we're here at a new year, and I thought, okay, so I guess I'm probably supposed to choose a new year, because Pastor Kim said I only needed it for a year. And so I've been wrestling with what my word for this year might be. And the word that, again, has chosen me is the word kneel. And I don't like the word, because the word has so many connotations So many positive and negative things wrapped up in it that I wasn't sure that it was right for me. Because I'm also finding that right now, no matter what you say, no matter what you think, there is often so much opposition. It seems like sometimes it's hard to to get along with a family member or a co-worker or a church friend because we have seen things over this past year that we're not sure do we fit together anymore. But what I have found as this word is continuing to work on me and choose me is that I must kneel. I must yield myself over and over to Christ who has called me on a journey, a journey of healing for this year, a journey of healing for myself and for my family and for my community for our nation, for our world, 
and I want to be a part of that, and I know that I can only be a part of that when I yield myself, when I end up on my knees knowing that I can't do this alone. Friends, we have been given the gift of the good news of Jesus Christ. And we are invited, commanded, to go and tell it on the mountain and in the valleys and in our neighborhoods and to our families and to our enemies. We're invited to tell it to those whom we love and those we find hard to love. And I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of falling on my knees. And one of the reasons I think this is so important is because when I fall on my knees, I see things from a new perspective. I see things from God's perspective and not my own limited, finite, human, broken perspective. But from God's perspective, calling us to bring about God's reign here on earth. I pray that you will come and bring your best gifts as I bring my best gifts as we kneel together to proclaim the good news that Christ has come for us. Amen. As we prayerfully enter a new year, 2021, we not only look forward with anticipation to the new year, but we look back and reflect on the amazing year of 2020. Through the year, you have continued to support our church with your faithful giving, and we are so grateful. Thank you. And as you prayerfully consider, consider moving into 2021, we trust that you are continuing to consider your giving to our church and to the ministries that your giving makes possible. The things that we're doing are not possible without that. There are ways that you can give to our church. The first is by mailing a check to Trinity United Methodist at 1602 North Main Street in Hutchinson, Kansas at 67501. Or you can give at trinityhutch.org or you can give on Venmo at Trinity UMC hyphen Hutch. Thank you.
Amen. Go tell it on the mountain. Thanks, guys. Scott and Vernon. Thank you, Sonia, and thank you, Lori, for the wonderful music today. We're always blessed with wonderful music and preaching and messages and prayers today. Um, if you're still listening and watching this video and you haven't hit pause yet, you're in for a treat. I'm going to give you a little behind the scenes. Uh, I'm going to pull back the curtain and share the secrets of how we make these videos. It is actually Monday, December 21st, 2020, and we are recording this service in the sanctuary. The reason I wanted to point that out to you is we may have accidentally said 2020 sometimes in the service. Oops, you know, we're, we're human, it happened. Um, and so we're kind of laughing about that, but we're not going to re-record the service. Uh, this service is for January 3rd, 2021, and we're celebrating Epiphany. We're celebrating the Magi seeing the star and coming to worship the newborn king. But the cool thing is, is we were just outside as a group, those of us who were recording this service, and we actually took a moment to remember and honor our good friend Duke Wiggins, who passed away, and we, we uh, talked about him and prayed and, and placed his remains in the columbarium. But while we were out there on this beautiful evening, we got to see the convergence of Saturn and Jupiter, sometimes called the Star of Bethlehem. So there we were outside, and we were inspired by this beautiful sight and then we came in and recorded the service. But the only way you would know that is if I revealed to you it's actually December 21st. So there you go, a little behind the scenes. Um, and, you know, just seeing that convergence of those beautiful planets and thinking about how that drew the world to the Christ child really was inspiring and a symbol of hope for us as we enter into this new year. So I hope you see this as an inspiring opportunity to, to think about life and to enter this new year um, and seek God's blessing wherever they may be found. And so with that, I'm going to offer the benediction. The words that we have said with our lips today, may we believe that in our hearts. And what we believe in our hearts, may we put into practice in our daily lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.